the general manager of the Los Angeles Chargers who have moved in their new beautiful facility right across the street from our studios. Uh, Joe Hortiz is here in studio. When did you first meet Jim Harbaugh in your life? In my life, uh, basically 26 years ago. Uh, he was the starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens my first year working for the Ravens. And uh, so I got a chance to, you know, engage with him there, both on the practice field, catch some balls from him, and then uh, we'd get in the racquetball court. He'd he'd recruit me in because he knew I played, and him and Eric Zyra, who was our backup Eric quarterback. Eric Zyra. Yeah, they'd have, like, violent games in there. And they wanted to play cutthroat one day, and so they brought me in, and uh, knowing I'd played, and I'm thinking I'm going to show these vets, these pro athletes that yes. I can hang with them and it was ugly it was ugly they were throwing me out of the way you know just I saw his level of competitiveness right then and there and I was like that's what that's what a pro looks like he right plays there. racket racquetball as yeah well? that, it was yeah he played rack it was racquetball then yeah okay that's an he yeah. attacks that like with an enthusiasm oh, it, as well just like everything else unknown to mankind yeah. so so you kept in touch with him in yeah, certain well, ways when we, when we hired John in Baltimore right. um he was at, you know Jim was at Stanford and so uh got to, got to know him then going into the school uh, certainly the brothers helped the connection and uh, right. you know just really a professional uh knew him from a professional sense and then uh, obviously when he'd come into town we'd talk and talk about coaches, you know, as he's looking for coaches in the college level and then uh, would help him. Like he called me about players. They, they were thinking about coming out. So, right. you know, professional relationship with some, you know, added bonus, you know, with the brothers. And then uh, and we got talking as I was getting, you know, some interest in some GM spots, talked to him about, you know, and working together. And here we are. And here you are. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, it really is amazing because a lot of people, we were just talking, I was talking just yesterday on yesterday's program uh, with my colleague, Ian Rappaport at NFL Network and NFL Media Group. And he was saying he was at your facility just two days ago yeah. and that there's something about Jim that feels different. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know. Cause again, I, I, I'm, wasn't around him every day in San Francisco and certainly not at Michigan either. Yeah. I just think the guy looks happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, that he's in a spot where he's back in the NFL yeah. coming off of hanging the banner mission accomplished oh, yeah. in the alma mater. Yeah. And you guys are working together. You got Justin Herbert. Yeah. It's at it, the top, obviously of a, of a, a roster that you're generally managing. Yeah. Um, is it is that is it that simple? Not to psychoanalyze him on live radio and television. <laughs> no, you know, you know, I don't want to get too deep into that. But like you know, I think Jim Jim loves the game and and loves coaching, loves the players, loves the organization, loves every organization he's ever been a part of, and he pours his passion into it, uh, and just has fun doing it. And that's all I've known uh, being around him. You know, as 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 he was as a player for us in Baltimore that one year when I've seen him at Stanford at Michigan uh, when he's over the facility with John. Obviously, I know John really well, and John's the same way. I mean, like, John's John's like a brother to me, working as long as I did with him. And um, the passion they both have for the game of football and the love they have for the, the players and everyone in the organization, you just see it out there. And the facility is unbelievable. The Spanos family, Dean, John, AG, what they build out there, mm -hmm. it just you can't help it come in and be excited to get to work every day. GM Joe Hortiz of the Chargers here on the Rich Eisen Show. And so your first order of business was to make some tough decisions, sure. man, yeah. involving some Chargers that had been around for a while, including Keenan Allen. Right. And I, 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 what do you say to Chargers fans who are, who are wondering why he is no longer with the team and Mike Williams right. also is now on the Jets? And that's... That's what many people associated the previous Chargers regime identity with, certainly right. on the offensive right. side of the ball. How do you address that? Uh, you know, and going into it, you knew it was going to be hard. We talked about it. Um, you know, we had four big salaries with four great players, and uh, you know, and so we knew we were going to have to make hard decisions. Um, You're including Bosa and Mac yeah, as the Bosa other two. Yeah, Bosa and Mac, yeah, right. okay. and, and Keenan and Mike, and. Um, you know, we were fluid in it, and we just talked with all of them and the representation. They all were great, and they all understood it. We all, you know, in all the conversations, everyone involved understood that there was moves that we're gonna, we were forced to make, um, and we had to do it to create opportunities for us to get other players. You know, and and it was going to be hard, and just it's the way it worked out. And uh, excited that that we have Khalil and Joey, and I wish Keenan the best. And, and I know it's a it's hard to take a player that caliber and uh and move on from for the fans and uh but we've, we're working to, to to backfill the roster and that's what we've been doing you know we brought in some good players dj 
uh, has looked great out there and obviously getting lad in the draft and, and uh, Brendan and Cornelius. And then, you know, so we're, we're making the room competitive. Uh, are they the big names that Keenan is and was here? No, but I, I have confidence and faith in those guys are going to step up. Well, and in terms of making a roster that that's in Jim's vision, for the lack of a better phrase yeah. here, right? Yeah. Um, what what do you what how do you go about that? Yeah, you know, I you come into it and you know, the identity I'm from and what we did in Baltimore physical team, and certainly it matches up with what Jim's done throughout his entire career. Um uh, so we you know, you pour your efforts in, you pour your resources in the you know, getting Joe Alton with the first pick, I mean, changes the dynamic of the entire offensive line. And uh and you know, it sets a tone, physicality, and but we're still going to throw the ball, and uh, and so you want playmakers outside, and and you just you just keep trying to collect them. No, well, in, in turn, let's just take it one piece at a time here. Uh, Joe Alt, yeah. um, right tackle. Yeah, that's not what he. It's not what he was. Well, that's not why he was the fifth overall pick, right? Yeah. Like he, he, you, you would normally take that and put that guy left tackle. You just happen to have an all-pro already sitting Absolutely. there. That yeah. Right, right, right. So how is he adjusting to to kind of flipping he's his done style of yeah, play? Yeah, he's here? been great. He's been great. He's, he's such a good athlete. So smart. So driven. I mean, honestly, early in in OTAs, you just w- watch him out there, and you're like, man, he's not having any issues with it. He just he really just like switching, you know, switching feet, and but he's just so athletic. Some guys have a little bit of a transition period, and you really haven't seen that with him. And uh, his technique's so sound, and again, he's so intelligent and understands how to reverse the technique, so to speak. And um, really doesn't look like he's missing a beat being on the right side. Um, and you know, you watch him; you, he looks like a, a veteran out there already. Well, and obviously, I don't need to ask you what they can do because you know Gus Edwards yeah. and J.K. Dobbins since they were Ravens. Right. So you're, so is it as simple as basically seeing what the Ravens did offensively, and and obviously knowing what Greg Roman has done offensively with Jim before, right? And saying that's what the Chargers are going to look like. I now? think we're going to be a balanced a balanced team in terms of running and passing i do you know we got justin herbert back there and that's the you know, whole that's you know, that's that, why it's difficult that, sort of yeah, to yeah, compute yeah. like to you have somebody who can push the ball down the field yeah you know yeah. like him yeah. and that's what charger fans have been waiting to see from this guy yeah. with consistency and now keenan's gone and mike's gone and those are the guys you might be able to push the field down the, push the ball down the field and also spread it out on the field throwing it you're bringing in these guys to run it. We have we have runners, but we also have. If you look outside, we got guys that can get downfield, and they have speed, vertical explosion, and suddenness to get open. So, um, you know, you try to build a, a team, a diverse skill set at at the all positions. And yes. I think we have that at wideout. I really do. And then, obviously, I and Gus and J.K. two guys I'm very familiar with, and Greg's very familiar with, physical, athletic runners, uh, versatile, both of them. And uh, come with the right mindset and work ethic and mentality that we want to we want to incorporate here. So the concept of Justin being a four thousand yard passer, we should we yeah, yeah slow the, slow no, our roll no, on no, that. Hey, right? Justin's going to throw the ball around now. I mean, we're going to throw it. You know, there's going to be some games where we throw it more, and there's going to be some games where we where we run it more. It's just the the game, the opponent, the way the flow of the game is going to dictate all that. But you know, Greg's an excellent play caller. I've had a chance to be around him for a long time. Uh, two different stints in Baltimore, and um, and certainly we've seen what he's done in San Francisco and and all his different stops. So, GM Joe Hortiz here from the Chargers. So, what what is your gig about now? Right now, it's just a uh, when you're getting ready for initial cuts. What, yeah. like, what like all top the, of August? What yeah. is what is so your gig about? The, all the all the scouts came in town uh, at the start of camp and getting the college guys ready to get on the road, prepared to get on the road. Yeah, uh, the pro guys have been you know working our roster all through OTAs. Um, and then now it's time to start paying attention to other teams. We're going to pay attention to ours, set the 53-man roster, but we're also going to be looking elsewhere, outside to see if there's guys like Shake Free that can help us out. So um, kind of looking at, looking all around all around the league, and then the college guys are getting all, all prepped. And, and so so this, your scout, like what you so see, you're, you're holding meetings with scouts who are identifying guys who might be cut on other teams? Absolutely, yeah. There's right a now? process. Yeah, you go through the fall or the uh, the summer and you sign each scout. The uh, uh, Lou Clark, who's our director of pro, he signs all the in-house guys, teams, yeah, and they're responsible for their teams. And they start identifying players on the roster that, hey, they may become available. And then we'll watch them play their preseason games and read up on them in the media and, and local media, and and 
track them and see who's going to be available and if they'll help us. And you meet with Jim every day? Is this a process also? Uh, so, yeah, well, Jim and I will meet with the, with the whole staff, uh, you know, his coaching staff and the football staff. Uh, we have those in the morning. And then we just have conversations throughout the day. Always stay in communication. Always keep each other abreast of what, what we're thinking. Is it true you used some time at the Combine to install offense and stuff like that? They did, yeah, absolutely. Yep, we, we In the hotel – Coaching staff because there is some dead time at the combine, right. you know, w- you know the way it's set up. And in the mornings, coaching and offense, defense coaching staffs were in uh, separate conference rooms working on the install because it's a new staff, yeah. and guys are arriving at different times, you know. So as the staff got put together, they had a chance to get together and be efficient with that that free time. Yeah, because I I did notice Michigan season lasted a little a little late. longer than than most. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that. Yeah, they're yeah. right deep yeah. deep in the re- deep in the February yeah, right in January. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it was awesome. gracious. Yeah, I, I met Jim for the first time when he was a quarterback as well, but it was at the University of Michigan. He was my first, my freshman year quarterback. Is that right? Yeah. There you go. 1986. That's something we have in common. I, you know? 1986. I will never forget. I'm on State Street. I'm, I'm going to the ticket office, and out came him and Jumbo Elliott from the same car. And you were a freshman? I was. That's I was awesome. starstruck. Yeah, 100%. On the spot, because that's Jim Harbaugh. That's yeah. Mr. That's Mr. Mr. Wolverine. I mean, he's the guy that was guaranteeing stuff against Ohio State, pissing off Bo, then cashing in with by saying like you know we're gonna beat ohio state then they did yeah, doing it, yeah. um uh and then they then they did lose the rose bowl to arizona state but it was the best michigan loss ever because ohio state hired their coach figuring that he could beat michigan with regularity it was john cooper there you go, there you go. not to troll all over but that was that's the first <laughs> time i met that Jim. one i still no, go into colleges no, no, you know no, so. no, i know you do <laughs> i know you do and ohio state sends some great players to yes, the next level have. for sure you know and so obviously these, these are exciting times in in that regard i'll take a shot on this one joe uh have you watched the hard knocks on the giants have you watched any of that a little bit of it a little bit of it i've been at the office a lot so i haven't watched too I'm much sure. of it. i've watched more of it like from a social media aspect right than, uh, so are you surprised that this stuff this sort of stuff is is out there for people to hear and see or it's it's something you're not used to if you've never right. gone through it um but is it, it does it sound familiar the, the it, cadence in these conversations yeah, certainly, yeah yeah you, you know everyone they're a little different in every building but uh yeah those conversations are had and you know that's that's the way we're heading and uh you know, we started in Baltimore in 2001. That's right. That was the original Were you one. on? Were you yeah. on? You were I was there? there. I was not. I tried to avoid the camera as much as I could. Were you yeah. on the field when, when uh, Billick was trying to test the turf in the veteran yeah. stadium and yeah. said we're not playing? Yeah, yeah. I was there yeah, on the sideline, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, because I, I do remember that first hard yeah. knocks. There was a that... big old divot there. I mean, oh, like the seam, and it was, I mean, you literally sunk down, you know, so. Uh, yeah, it's it was, and you had to get used to, you know, you, the boom mics would come out of nowhere back then, you right. know, and just. Yeah, be careful what you're but saying. But Billick wanted to do it to keep people sharp, right? Yeah. Like, to, like you're coming off the Super Bowl, and he's just like, "We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get everybody stay in focused, here." Stay focused, stay locked in. Yeah, and it was, and it was a neat story, you know. I mean, it was a great concept, and it still is, you know. And uh, certainly, it's it's attracts the attention of the, of the audience. And again, I, I you know, I, we, we've just met, and you, you strike me as a guy that doesn't want to pound his chest a little bit here, but uh, I'll give you the opportunity. Somebody that you've scouted in your career that you're like, let's go get this guy, and he turned out to, to be. Who are, you, who are you most proud of of somebody that you've uh, you pounded a table for? I really, it, in Baltimore, it's, it, was a, it was a collective sure. process. And, uh, but you had to have pounded the table for somebody at some point, We right? all did. We all did. We really did. It's a group process. With it's Ozzie a, at, yeah, the, at, the, at yeah. the head of the table? Ozzie's at the head, Eric there next to him, and then Eric shifted to the head. And, you know, it, this, there's multiple scouts that look at every player. Um, same way here in, in Los Angeles, you know, we do it together. The coaches get involved. We want to find the best players for our organization, best people for our organization, uh, who we all like. You know, you want to find sure. a player that the coaches like, the scouts like. There's no one individual driving it. That's the way I was taught, and that's what I believe. But in, there's so. an eye in Hortiz. No, so yeah, come on. What, no. So there's not one guy in your like where you you're you're sitting in the stands. You're like that guy's flashing. And then you brought him. You brought him to the table. At least uh, there's not one guy. Really? There's not because we. It, it's a. I really is rich. Like in Baltimore, it's a process. Like one scout identifies him, likes him. Maybe another scout likes him more. Uh, maybe one scout looks at him. Another scout goes and works him out and talks about how great he was. In right. It. But it's it's a it's a group process. We do it together, and uh, that's the way we're doing it here. And how many times um, when you were in a meeting with scouts in Baltimore? 
and um, you liked a guy, but immediately disliked him because Daniel Jeremiah pounded the table all the time. You know, you know okay. that, that's the guy that drove us. You know, and so <laughs> DJ man, he's the best. You know, no, I tell you what, DJ, the crew he was a part of. Yes, so he wrote some of the best reports. And it, it became, what do you mean? Like his the summaries, the the the, the uh, creativity in the summaries. Really, was, oh, his was creative yeah, writing. Yeah, it was excellent. You know, and. Uh, huh. it, it was like a competition in there. So we, we didn't know that about DJ. Joe, Joe Douglas was in there. Uh, right. Chad Alexander, who's our assistant GM. Right. Uh, Andy Weidel, who's the assistant GM of uh, Pittsburgh. DJ Jeremiah Washburn, who's right. now coaching with the Eagles. They'd all get in there, and it, there were some there were some witty reports being read. What's it going to be like before I let you go back across the street? And I greatly appreciate you taking Absolutely. the time during training camp to. By the way, you're the first Charger to be here awesome. with the Chargers. Now we're neighbors, yeah. you know. Um, so what's it going to be like, do you think, in SoFi? Raiders in the house, week one. Yeah. And you know, you know, Raiders are from Los Angeles as well, right. from back in the day. And fans are crazy for them. Yeah. But this is a new era, new look. Charger team, yeah. Jim back on the sideline. Right. You know him. His yeah. hands are going to be on his khakis, knees, <laughs> right? What's it going to be like, do you I, think? I, it's going to be exciting. It really is. I mean, the atmosphere is going to be great. Um, certainly, I know there's a there's a Raiders presence here yes. in, from the past. But, man, if you've been out of training camp, just to see the fans, the excitement. You know, I'm expecting a, a great contingent of Chargers fans in there. And uh, we're going to be fired up. We're going to be ready to go. Is it fair to say as well that, you know, um, when you're a general manager and you're putting a roster together, you do look at the team that potentially – you have to get past yeah, the absolutely. Chiefs as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you, you, you know the division you're in. Yes. Uh, and you have to, you have to, you can't ignore it. You know, they're the teams you got to beat to to win the division to, yes. to guarantee a spot in the playoffs. Right. You win the division, you're guaranteed in. So. So do you have some Chiefs beaters on your team? You, you have some Chiefs beaters. You have some Chiefs schemes. You know, you know absolutely. Okay. You know, our coaching staff is phenomenal. Jesse on defense, Greg on offense, leading leading the charge on both sides of the ball and. And Fick on on special teams, so they're gonna you know you those guys can develop some schemes and okay. we're gonna put our best foot forward. Well, speaking those. on behalf of a lot of Charger fans, uh, I'll just give you this information. You probably know it already. Number eighty-seven on the Chiefs, yeah, catches a lot of passes. He does, he does. Um, and he you know. Uh, with all due respect to the Spanos, is he he can claim ownership of the Chargers oh, yeah. in many different ways. Well, he's, he's I tell you what, I've seen him a lot. In a different stadium and, and with a different just team. last year, yeah, and he's he's a he's a great player. And uh, but you well, have you got something? Well, we know him. You know, you got you're aware of him, so you do your best to stop him. You know, he's hard to stop. Though I listen, I've been on plenty of teams where we've yeah. we've tried to stop him, and he's going to get his. You know, he's a great player. All right, brother. Hey, b before I let you go, um, we're going to debut a new segment with you here, if okay. you don't mind. All right. Um, over the years, uh, we've had a segment called the Bill Belichick press conference moment of the day, pretty okay. much. Okay. And now Bill is, as you know, now a part of the media. He's yeah. for the first time in 50 years, not part of a coaching staff. So we have decided to rename the segment, the Jim Harbaugh press conference moment. Okay. It's called the Harbaugh files because you know, he's, he loves Rockford the Rockford files. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So we're debuting the very first edition of the Harbaugh Files with you here today, if you All don't right. mind. Awesome. Talking about the glide approach to training camp. Hit it. This is Jim Rockford. At the tone, leave your name and message. I'll get back to you. Sometimes people that are standing on third base think they hit a triple, but they didn't. The Harbaugh Files. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just uh, the analogy of a uh, you know, rocket. Taken off, you know. I mean, it... <laughs> and then before you know it, boom, you know, or a plane going down the runway. I mean, it starts at a dead stop and then it builds up speed, gets faster, faster, going so fast that it just has to leave the ground. And then, I mean, there's a little bit of a glide that takes place even then. And then before you know it, you're you're up to thirty thousand feet. The Harbaugh Files. Fantastic. Oh. There's the what? there's the debut. It resonates. It makes sense, <laughs> you know. I mean, we've all been on that plane, you know. Just we've all been there, you know. So, oh my God, the rocket ship. Yeah. We'll try to be one. By the way, I'm not even going to ask you if he does it in the meetings because that's Jim. Yeah. That's yeah. 100. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
It is, it is the glide effect. I'm speechless. Well. I'm without speech. This is, if, if we're not going to have the Belichick wow. press conference moment of the day. Yeah, no, this is I perfect. Mean, it's a no-brainer. We're going to, we're going to, yeah, we got to go to, we, we're, we're pivoting. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, listen, I mean, it, when, when you sit there and listen to the glide, it makes sense to you, you know, as you're listening, like, okay, you can, you can relate it to how we're going to start camp, you know, and just, we're not slingshotting off we're right. taking our time getting down it's not like know, a rocket build. going yeah, straight yeah, up yeah it doesn't explode up it just climbs slowly and then takes off okay you know? and so um where where are we in that process are we are we are we at ten thousand feet yeah, where we're are up we there we're okay up so there. the wi-fi yeah, is yeah, working yeah, yeah the wi-fi is working okay. you know we've got contact with houston and you know so <laughs> we're up there you know and uh Getting ready to get, get break the uh, break the atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere. Okay, so we're looking, we're above the clouds. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Joe Hortiz. Thanks for the time, man. Appreciate you guys. Time. Anytime. Listen, yeah. tell everybody uh, we we say hello. Um, do, do you need a housewarming gift? No, I'm good. I'm good. Everybody's you know, good. You know what? I did lose my best dad ever sign in the move. So, uh, like, you know, I I don't know if that's it. You know, but like it disappeared on me. So, no, you know, I, I mean, uh, uh, I'm I, I've been accused of being sticky fingered uh, with things that I really want, but this this one's mine. Well, they um, did tell me it was a tie. So, like, now I know who well, I tied. You yeah. Know, so, well, yeah. You, actually, I've just got three kids. Yeah. So, I mean, if if it comes if it yeah. comes down to numbers, I I'm might like, lose yeah, the yeah, numbers yeah, game yeah, to you. Yeah. Thanks for the time, Joe. Appreciate it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.